This video is going to be a little bit different, and it's kind of where things start to slowly change in Java, and it's going to be stuff that you're not really used to, and that's okay. Since the beginning of this playlist, we've been using only one method, called public static void main string args, just a new slash that is a method. And just a key takeaway from this video, I'm going to give it early, it's called the main method. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about methods what they are, what we can do with them. Before I can start, I have to tell what a method is. But um, what is a method? A method is just basically a block of code that only runs when you call it. It's similar to a function and can be used interchangeably within the two. However, a method is built on top of classes and objects. You'll see that later while we, do, while we work with methods. You'll see that it's built on top of classes or objects. So let's go ahead and do public static void main string args. We've been using this method since the beginning of this playlist. And it's one of the most notably iconic methods in Java. And this is called our main method. It passes in a parameter called string args, which means it's going to pass in through an array of strings. So then we're going to be doing system.out.println. Let's just say method. If you watch the beginning of the playlist, you already know that it's going to print out method. However, how can we make our own methods to do the same job and do similar things? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making our own methods and we're going to be starting to do things with them to interact with the main method. Hopefully that makes sense by the end of this video. So a method consists of four things. The fourth one is optional. However, it's most like, however, most likely you will have the fourth thing in your method. So the first thing that your method must have is an access modifier, such as public or private. The second thing is your return type. In this, in the main method, our return type is void. Void means that it will, it's zero. It does not have a return value. If we put like another type of return data type, like int or double, then it's going to return that data type. So whenever you do a return type other than void, it's going to expect a return value. And we'll talk more about that when we change the return value. But as of now, just like the beginning of the playlist, we're going to stick it to void. And then you have the name of your method. And after the name of your method, you have the parameters that you pass in through. This is optional. However, you will most likely have it in your method. So first, let's call a method without the parameters. Or first, let's make a method without the parameters. So let's say public static void, let's call it my method. Let's end it there. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be moving this code to the method. Let's say we want it to print out the word method. So let's do that. We're going to print out method. Then what we can do is we can call the method into our main method so that it can print us out it can show us to in the terminal method. So my method. By the way, to call a method, you simply do two parentheses and a semicolon. So let's go over here and let's run this. Let's run the main method. And then you can simply see it says method. If we don't call the method, we compile it, you can see what do you see? Any guesses? Nothing is going to happen because we never called the method. And keep in mind that a method is a block of code that only runs when you call it. So because we did not call the method, it won't run. So now we can start doing a little bit more interesting things with methods. And we can start to add a parameter within the method. So let's go over here and let's say my method Let's put that, let's keep that there. So you're gonna see an error easily. Method my method in class Joe cannot be applied to given types. Required an int, found no arguments, reason actual and formal argument lists differ in length. So what this simply means is that what we're doing is we're calling an integer x, but there's nothing in the main method for it to call and we haven't passed an argument through the main method. So what I'm gonna be doing is since I pass through an integer called x, I'm going to say if x is less than 6, then I'm going to print 
x is less than 6. However, if x is not less than 6, I'm going to say x is greater than 6. And then I'm going to end the method here. So then you're going to see the same error. Method, my method, in class Joe cannot be applied to given types. So we're saying that we're passing through an integer. But in, when we call the method, it's found no arguments. So it can't pass through the method to determine whether x is less than 6 or greater than 6. This is why we need to put in a parameter to pass in through the method. In this case, I'm going to be doing 7. Keep in mind that I pass a parameter called a called an integer. I'm, I called it x, but it's a data type called an int. So that it's an int in the data type. The data type is an int, but the variable is x. So keep in mind that when you call the method and you're putting in an argument, it has to match the data type that you put in the parameter of your method. If I put in like false, it's not going to work. You're going to get an error. Incompatible types. Boolean cannot be converted into int. So what we did here is that this error is telling us that we're calling a boolean, but the method is expecting an integer. So what we need to do is we need to change this into an integer. And then let's go ahead. I'm going to exit out of this. And I'm going to call this. And you're going to see x is greater than 6. Because what this is doing is that we have called 7. We're going to pass it in through the method. And we're going to see if x is less than 6. Since x is not less than 6, it's going to skip this. And instead, it's going to print x is greater than 6. And that's it. You can see in the terminal, x is greater than 6. An interesting thing is that if we call 6 and then we run it, you're going to see x is greater than 6. However, this is kind of a false statement since x is equal to 6. We can instead add an else if statement. If x is equal to equal equal to 6, then we can say x is equal to 6. But you kind of get the gist. But yeah, whatever you, whatever you pass through in your parameter, it must match what you're calling. So if you're passing through an int and you're calling a boolean, you're going to get an incompatible type error. So with that being said, the next thing we're going to talk about is the return type. We can change the return type if we need it. However, when we're changing the return type and it's not void, it's expecting a return value. Because we put void originally, it wasn't expecting a return value. So in order for it to expect a return value, we have to do a return keyword. And we're in this case, we're going to return x. After that, we're going to say return negative one. If x is not greater, if not x is not less than six, we're going to return negative one. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to print this. So let's call system.printline and then let's call our method, my method seven. And what this is going to do is it's going to return x or it's going to return negative one, depending on whether it's greater than or less than six. In this situation, it's going to return negative one because seven is in fact greater than six and it's not less than six, so it's gonna return negative one. So that is it with methods. However, there is an additional thing you can do. You can call the method itself, and you can pass in through parameters through here. So like, let's say I pass, for example, a five. You can simply see a return a five, because since five is less than six, it's just gonna return five. So this is just another way you can pass in through parameters in your method. But in your code, you can already set a predefined you can already set a predefined argument to go in through your method. So a key takeaway from here is we learned a little bit about the main method. Public static void main string args is the main method. It passes through a parameter called a string array. The next thing we learned is how we made our own methods. A method requires four things, an access modifier, a return type, the name of the method, and optionally some parameters. Then what we can do is if your parameter is void, then it's not expecting return value. However, it's any other data type other than void, then 
it will expect a return value, so you have to use the return keyword. Then we learn how to make our methods, and then we call them into the main method to return our results, what we wanted. And that is it for methods. Hopefully this made sense. If it didn't, be sure to leave a question down in the comments below. I'll be prompt to respond to comments. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.